our guest host, Lauren LaRosa here. And this is where we open up the phone lines and we just ask people if they need problems, if they need, if they have problems, if they need any type of advice, we are here to help them. Hello, who's this? Hello, who's this? Hello, who's this? It's Maurice. Maurice, good morning. What's your question? Talk to us. Hey, man, I'm trying to figure out, man, like, how do I get my child's mother to see that is a big difference by me and her not being together and growing up to a point of having two-parent households, like, trying to figure out, letting her know it's a big difference between that. When you say big difference, you mean, like, for the child there's a difference and, like, you're trying to... Yeah, way. like it's a big difference with growing up in a two-parent household versus, you know, so I have daughters, of course, but it's a big difference with them growing up seeing in and out guys and all that. Like, man, her choice of judgment ain't too good either. Got you. I mean, there, there is a difference, of course, but you also need a healthy environment. I mean, I grew up in a two-parent household that was healthy. My, my parents loved each other. Things got, everything was good. They got along. Uh, and they made concessions for, for me. They, you know, they both worked. They both cleaned. They both did everything in the household. But if two parents in the household are not seeing eye to eye, they can't get along, and it's more toxic. I don't think that's good for any child to see that toxic. What's, what's the word? Toxicity? What's the word? To toxicity. Toxicity. But I think he's saying that, so they've already split, and mm -hmm. his kid's mom has, like, guys coming in and out, and he feels like she's not making the best decisions, and mm -hmm. the kids are watching that, right? Yes, but... And I can't fault that because, you know what I'm saying, things happen to a point where, like you said, like if two parents are in the house and they can't get along, stuff like that. But I feel like the differences that we had could have been worked out. It wasn't nothing that, you know what I'm saying, I think her option in, in our relationship problems is leaving versus working things out. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that could have been worked out. But what did, what did I know you do? Talks. Or what happened? Said, what did I do? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, hitting hard times here and there and certain things may not – play out how I think, like, you know what I'm saying, her, her patience isn't isn't big on that, like, you know what I'm saying, so it's kind of like, she look at it like I'm not putting enough effort in her eyes, well, it's you know never, what I'm saying, it's, it's kind of harder. It's never over, you can still try, you can still try to have that conversation if you still feel a spark or you still feel like y'all have love for each other, it's never over, I mean, we could always grow and evolve and get better and then come back to the situation and hopefully make things better, you, you ever give yourself, try to give yourself another shot of, of getting back there? Yeah, I mean, I do, man, but you got to think, though, how many how many guys I got to wait after? I mean, I feel like you can't really, like, if you guys aren't together, right, you can't, you can't really give her, like, a, well, I need to be prioritized around these guys, or you can't deal with this many people or whatever. You just got to realize y'all aren't together anymore. And if you do want to get back with her because the two-parent household thing is a priority to you and you really still love her, I think... Outside of your kids, y'all have to really get to know each other at this point of where you are. Whatever the issues were, if you've grown from that and you want her to see that, maybe, I don't know, start courting her again. I'm sorry to say it, but you might have to be become one of those guys that she's dating. And if if the if it's there, it's there. Do you feel like she still, you know, wants to be with you as well, too? Uh, Yeah, because she don't, like, hide in a lot of things. But then again, she does try to keep me in the blind for a lot because you know when a female's done like is well, is okay. over with but it's yeah. like a lot of things that she does is hit to a point where I don't feel like she want me to know because she waits to a point and she's feeling like she sees the difference in me when she's ready to well I think it's just a conversation point I think as a woman when you separate from a situation because something didn't work out and you said she didn't have patience for certain things or whatever was happening she might still see you in that light um, and, you know, if you've been doing some work and whatever, and you think that you want to take a shot at it again, then you just got to show her that. And that's going to take some time, too, though. So you can't expect her to cut off all her hoes right now. Mama got to have a life, too. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping she's making the best decisions, you know, for, for your kids, like you mentioned. But you got to give her some time and just in, the, in that time, y'all need to be having some conversations, not just about the kids, but about you guys as adults in a relationship. If you're having problems, you need uh, advice, relationship advice, or any type of advice will help you out. Hello, who's this? Hi, my name is Levi. Hey, Levi. Good morning. What's your question? Good morning. I can't believe I got through. Oh, my gosh. But uh, my question is, I've known this guy for about eight years, and we've been talking on and off. And recently, we decided to become a little more, you know, more serious. We're together now. 
And I guess my issue is how do I learn to trust? We've had trust issues before, and I'm an independent woman. I've, I've been doing everything, paying bills by myself for, you know, the last four or five years. I'm 30 now. I bought my first house when I was 24. Um, and now I guess we're, you know, trying to build together. And at what point do you just let go and just trust? That's a you question. Like you just have yeah. to do it. Um, my the way that I the way that I think about it is, if you don't do that, right, you never know where you guys are going to go. Like you, you literally just have to do it. You've been so used to like getting everything done that you probably are you even By giving myself. him a shot yeah. to like are you are, are you allowing him the space to show you what you should be trusting and that he can lead you? Like, do you even do that? I am, and I'm really trying, and he recognizes that I'm trying, but he wishes that I trusted him more. Yeah, I think you just... Like, on certain ideas, he tries to bring me, and I might have hesitation, and I think he, he senses that, but I still try to go with it. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, it's one of those things, trust has to be earned, right? And And if you feel funny about something, uh, he has to give you the opportunity to, for you to gain that trust. Um... And whatever it may be, because at the end of the day, you don't want to be quote unquote stupid and dumb at, at all anyway, right? You right. don't you don't want to you know feel something in your right. gut, and then you don't go with your gut, and then you find out something that you didn't want to find out later on. So I would say trust, but I would say trust with your eyes open, and he has to understand that he has to gain the trust. Like in any relationship, I think whether something happens or something doesn't happen, you have to gain that trust. That trust is earned, and then from there you can figure that out. But I, I think that. You know, you should always continue to keep that one eye open just in case and let him earn that trust. But don't let the just in case get in the way of him trying to earn it, though. Like, right. come in, like, not right. biased. But, I mean, you, you seem like a pretty smart girl. Like, you know what I mean? You, he courted you for eight years before y'all got here. But you got to let him show you. If he don't show you, you don't even, there's no test. Like, you got to let him get out there and show you a bit. That's true. And that's what I'm really trying to do, guys. Like, I really am. But... You know, you just don't want to fail, and you don't want to fail because of someone else. Do you watch Run the uh, Run This World, Run the World on uh, Amazon? I don't. You need to watch world, it. No. There was an episode about okay. this. Very strong, independent woman on the show. She had a great man, but she just couldn't let him do his thing. She wouldn't give him the chance. She talked herself out of an amazing engagement. She got in her own way. Oh wow! Did he give you some? Did okay. he give you a reason not to trust him, Mama? So I don't want to go too deep into it because it involved a death um, with someone that he was with. Um, so I feel like he, at, at first he lied to me and then there was distrust and then we decided to be friends. He got blocked. It's been a long journey. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so that's the difficult thing. Finally... If, if somebody lies or, or, you know, you lose the trust for somebody because of what they did, they got to get that back. They got to earn that back. And, and right. trust is, is one of the most probably one of the most important things in a relationship. And sometimes it, it takes a while. It might it might take a month. It could take a year. It could take five years to gain that trust back or to see how somebody is when you're not around. Um, and that takes time. And, and hopefully that y'all can work through it. Thank you so much, you guys. It's really helped me. I'm going to just I'm going to watch that show and I'm going to see what happens. All right. Good luck, mama. I'm going to I'm going to give in. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Well, if you needed any advice, you could give us a call, 800-585-1051. Now, we got rumors on the way. What are we talking about? We do. We are talking about Sinead O'Connor, uh, the singer-songwriter who died yesterday at the age of 56. All right. We'll get into that next. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.